For any of you who has been following me for a while, you know that this is the puzzle that I keep avoiding doing, but I have promised that I'm going to do it this year. And I just realized how late in the year we are already. So I decided, well, I'm just going to do it like I've got no choice. <laughs> but anyway, here it is, the pink crypt puzzle. Oh God, I wonder why do I do this to myself, but it doesn't have that many pieces, it's only 654 pieces, so honestly when I did the mischief puzzle and it had a lot of misfits, I basically just followed the puzzle map and it took me I think around 3 to 4 hours to finish it with 500 pieces. So for any of you that doesn't know what a crypt puzzle is, it's basically a single color puzzle that has like a puzzle map that, well, puzzle map, I call it that. But it's basically, it gives you the shape of the pieces that follows next. So you've got no pictures to go from, basically just the shape of the pieces. But I have a plan. Like, I have been studying the Crypt Puzzle for two years. I literally had this puzzle since before having my YouTube channel. So you can see I've been avoiding it for a long time. But I think I basically mastered the technique. So what I'm gonna do, basically I'm gonna separate all the pieces into four different piles. So the first one is going to be all the edge pieces and I'm going to probably do the frame first. Oh, actually, I'm going to put it into five sections. I just remembered one more. So yeah, I'm going to do the frame first. Then I'm going to divide all of the double pieces. There's quite a few of them. So all the double pieces, then all normal pieces. There's already three piles. Then I'm going to do all the round pieces. That's the fourth pile. And then the fifth pile, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to spot them, but basically all of the ones that are like on the edge between the circle and the square, because they have really weird shapes. So if I manage to put the entire puzzle into five piles, that's basically almost like doing like, what, 525 piece puzzles or something like that. So that's basically the plan. I have no idea how it's actually going to go. I'm still intimidated by it, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not doing it because I'm not scared of it anymore. I did promise it to you guys though, and I like to keep my promises, so... I said I would rather do it now, because then next week is probably gonna be the 3000 piece puzzle. And honestly, you know what, I'm probably more intimidated by Crypt Puzzle than the 3000 piece puzzle. I don't know why, but it just feels like at least you've got sections that you can separate here, it's just like... pink? Like, what am I supposed to do with it? I'm just really hoping that it's gonna be quite obvious, like the difference in the shape of the pieces and to be able to see what's like in the circle and what's outside of the circle. But yeah, oh my God. Okay, so the sorting didn't go as planned, so instead of having five piles, I've now got nine piles, so basically what happened was I divided the frame pieces into three sections, so I mean, the corner pieces, come on, they're huge, they need to get their own section. So yeah, I basically divided the edge pieces into three piles, which are basically the corner pieces, then I've got like the singular ones and then the double one. So that's already three piles. Then I separated anything that I thought was like the inside of the circle. So I've got all the singular pieces, I've got all the double pieces, again, we've got, you know, singular, double, and then we've also got what I realized like halfway through the sorting, they're like giant pieces, which if you see the comparison, yeah, they're basically massive. And they're supposed to be like in the circle because from what I could see on the outside, there's no like giant pieces. It was really difficult to see which pieces are actually like inside the circle and what's outside of the circle. So I'm just hoping that I did the sorting okay. And then the last three piles are basically the same piles that I mentioned in the beginning. So normal pieces, double pieces, and then whatever's like on the edge between the circle and the square. So what do I do now? Because it feels like the difference is quite obvious. So if I just took the the picture and just go by the shapes, I think it would be actually fairly easy. I'm not gonna say super easy, but I think it would be fairly easy to, you know, finish the puzzle. But then completely without the puzzle map, I think it could be really difficult. What I think I'm gonna do just to not make it too easy or too hard for myself, I think I'm just gonna take like the middle ground and I'm gonna use the map, 
but only to tell me like which piece follows next. So for instance, I'm not gonna go exactly to look for the shape, but I'm gonna say, okay, the next five pieces are basically like double pieces. So instead of looking through all of the pieces, I'm gonna just go through the like, you know, the double pieces. I think it's still gonna be difficult this way, but definitely a bit less intimidating than just doing it completely without the map. I mean, they put it there for a reason, you know? <laughs> like, it's not supposed to be done without it. So yeah, I'm gonna do the frame first, like I said before, and I think it's gonna give me like a good impression of how difficult the puzzle is actually gonna be. I think also the puzzle is gonna be probably bigger than like your average puzzle because the pieces seem a bit bigger. So yeah, I've already done one crypt puzzle. I don't remember how big it was. I think it's like closer to like a thousand piece puzzle than a 500 piece puzzle. I don't think I've got anything else to say, so I think it's time to start with the frame. So I have a bit of a head cold, so if I sound weird, that's because of it. Anyway, the frame is complete and honestly it was easier than I expected it to be. It took me about 20 minutes to do it, which is like a normal time for a frame build, I guess. And the quality of the puzzle is good enough for me to know exactly which pieces go together, like I didn't have any misfits. And I did help myself with puzzle map, just in a way of like knowing that there's like double pieces and then singular pieces. And it really did make a difference because I knew exactly when I need to stop and I didn't have to go through all of the pieces. I honestly do not know what to continue with. Like I think the most sensible thing to do would be to do like the the edge pieces of like the inside circle so I get like some sort of division and it would be easier to maybe build on the inside but anywhere I look now it's just pink 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 and yeah I can feel that it like stresses me out slightly <laughs> but I know I'm gonna be okay because I have puzzle maps so even if I go piece by piece exactly by the map I'm gonna be fine I'm honestly not as stressed as I thought I'm gonna be so that's good so yeah, I think I'm gonna start with like the circle things, like probably try to do the obvious ones. Like the middle of the circle is actually really easy to spot because it's very curved. And then the further out you go, the harder it becomes. So maybe I'm gonna do like a little bit of the center and then try to do the frame as well. Like, I don't know what tactic you're supposed to use with like single color puzzle, but yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to find out. Okay, so hopefully I can record this without the dog being too loud. But basically, oh my god, this puzzle, <laughs> this is insane. If I manage to finish all of like the squarey bits around the circle today, I'm gonna be super happy about it. But it's basically like, I did really bad sorting in a way because there's a lot of pieces that are still in piles. <laughs> So there was a lot of pieces that were basically put into the wrong piles, so I'm missing a few. And I think I've got a few extra as well. I honestly don't know what I was thinking when I said, oh, I'm just gonna use the map for like a reference of what size piece comes next, because this, like, I need to know the exact shape, and even then it's taking me forever. Like, honestly, oh my god. I was right to be intimidated by this puzzle, but I don't know if I did it the wrong way. I don't know if it would be better to actually start with the circle because you can, you have some obvious shapes. But I just thought because I'm good at shape sorting and finding like specific shaped pieces, I thought that would make it a bit easier. But I'm not sure anymore. I'm just like, there's so much still to go. But I'm not planning to force myself because I don't want to get like a grudge towards the puzzle and just not wanting to come back to it. That's why I said like, even if I have a lot of time left over, as soon as I do all of the squarey bits, I think I'm just gonna call it a day because it's gonna be <laughs> too exhausting. I'm gonna go do other puzzles. I've got two out at the moment. So I'm gonna do a puzzle to relax from doing a puzzle. <laughs> 
yeah, that's what I do. Okay, I've been doing this puzzle for over three hours now and I came to a point where <laughs> I'm getting a little bit frustrated. I just came to a point where now all of the pieces that I have to put in, well, majority of them, are just standard cut pieces. And it's literally like taking one piece out and going through all of them to find one. And yeah, it's just, it's not a great time for me. And obviously we are coming into winter so it's half four now and I basically already lost daylight. Not that it matters here because there is no like gradient or anything like that. But it's just like I can feel that my eyes get a bit more tired when it's all unnatural light. I know I said I'm gonna finish like the outside today and do the rest tomorrow, but I'm not actually sure that I will. So I'm definitely not gonna be doing any more screen recording because the light is just not great anymore. And I have to grab some food, I also have to charge my phone, so I'm gonna have like a little break, maybe not so little, <laughs> but if I actually manage to, you know, regain some of the energy, I might come back to it a bit later. Otherwise I'm just gonna have to sleep on it and return tomorrow morning. It's a brand new day today and honestly I have been really good last night so basically after finishing recording I went to go charge my phone and then I actually finished one of the puzzles that I have started like the night before so there was a lot of puzzling going on last night and I have to say for anyone who saw the last puzzle haul it was the one from the charity shop the only open bag out of the three and it's got all the pieces I just wanted to point that out so I think I can happily say that I think the puzzle is gonna be complete but now going back to the crypt puzzle so I was like after I finished the other puzzle last night I was feeling a bit tired and you know this puzzle doesn't really help you get relaxed because well you don't really have a picture, you have to heavily rely on the puzzle map. But what I decided to do is like change my tactic a little bit because I kept thinking like, oh, I have to, you know, the Cinderella she method every single piece and it's just exhausting. So what I basically did, I put a podcast on that I wanted to listen to anyway. I sat down and I literally took my time. And I was just like, it doesn't matter how long it takes, I'm just gonna go piece by piece. And also what I've done is I basically did the shape sorting as well. I combined all of the pieces because everything now is for the inside anyway. But one thing that kind of like worries me, but I cannot find this piece. So I'm not sure if there's like a mistake on the puzzle map, but this piece, I just, I try to look for it multiple times because it's a very specific piece and I just cannot find it. I heard that some crypt puzzles had mistakes before so maybe that's just a mistake but to be fair I do only rely on the puzzle box I haven't opened the solution key so maybe that's like maybe it's correct in there but I'm just gonna let that be for now I'm sure that I'm gonna be able to find it unless that's gonna be like the second brand new puzzle with the missing piece in the history of my life I hope not so what the tactic for today is is basically I think start on the outside and make my way in because the bigger pieces are easy to like eliminate I think because there's quite a lot of small ones and I just want to leave that towards the end for when I've got less pieces in general so yeah definitely gonna rely on the solution key and yeah I'm just gonna crack on with it oh I forgot to say last night it basically took me about an hour longer to finish what I had to do and the inside everything that you see assembled here I basically didn't use the key for that because I think the curves are so like obvious that it's a bit easier to follow without actually having the pattern but I kind of got stuck after that so. <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna use the solution key because I think there's a lot of pieces that are like probably 
spread across the other sections as well. So wish me luck. I know I already said that, but what I realized last night is with this puzzle, you just have to tackle it in a completely different way. So you kind of have to give up on the thought that it's going to be easy because let's face it, it's single color. It's not going to be easy. No matter what you do, it's just not going to be easy. You're still going to have to go piece by piece, do the Cinderella she method until you find the perfect fit and put it in and do the same with every next piece. I think for me, the most important thing when doing this puzzle was just the switch when I was able to get out of that frustration zone of like, oh my God, this puzzle is so difficult and just going into is gonna take as long as it takes. It doesn't really matter, just enjoy the process. And that's definitely one thing that really helped because once I put the podcast on and just got into the zone, nothing could stop me. Like it's taking forever because obviously you have to do every piece separately, but it does get quicker with more pieces you put in. So you know that it's only gonna get easier and that's also one thing to look forward to. I forgot to press record at one point, so there is a bit of a jump, but you're not missing out on much anyway, so don't worry about it. I cannot believe I'm saying this, but oh my god, I finished the puzzle. <laughs> oh wow, that was something. 600 and how many? 54 pieces, and it took me about 7 hours, so I would definitely say that this is the hardest puzzle I've done. But it's like a completely different puzzle, I cannot compare it to anything else because it's the only single colour puzzle I've done. I can easily say that I don't think I'm going to be doing any single colour puzzles ever again, it's just... I don't know. It's just not the type of puzzling I enjoy because I relied heavily on the puzzle map or like, I don't know how they call it, solution key. I did find a mistake though. I don't know if it's the same mistake as with the gold version, I think it had it, or, or the gradient one, I'm not completely sure. It threw me off a little bit, but then when I built around it, I realized what the shape was and I did manage to find it. But the other piece that I thought was wrong was actually correct, so I just couldn't find it, I guess. But yeah, one thing I wanted to say is that when I was doing the circle, it became really difficult to know where you are. So like, if I had the solution key out, I would probably have to like, for next time, if I ever did the cryptozole again, I'm not. But for anyone doing it, what I would suggest is just like, take the solution key out or like, find it online print it out, just get it on the separate paper and then cross every piece that you've put in out. Because for me, I could see that the majority of the time I was just so lost with where I am on the map and after actually crossing the section out because I wanted to, you know, for anyone who gets the puzzle next, I wanted to mark the mistake. So after I crossed this off, it was so much easier to do the rest of the inside because it was easier to know exactly, okay, just one row from that is because it's just too many rows. So that's definitely one thing that I would suggest doing. And yes, I have other suggestions as well. I think starting with the frame was a very good idea, but then what I would do, I, I think I would make like the circle first. I mean, I tried to do that, but because some of the pieces don't interlock, I just gave up on it. And then some of the pieces were actually the bigger pieces that was like, oh, that's not on the outside. It's only on the circle. So I put them separate. So I was missing a lot of pieces. So that's definitely one thing that I wouldn't recommend doing. So I separated like the big puzzles and like the smaller ones because I thought the big ones were only inside the circle, but it's not true. The big pieces are also outside of the circle. So I think what I would do is just like separate the completely obvious round shapes and anything that's not completely obvious, I will just leave with the main section and just do like the shape sorting but other than that i hope you enjoyed me being tortured i didn't no just kidding it wasn't a torture like i said once i switched it was very enjoyable it's like it was almost like a meditated me meditate meditative state i don't know how to say it but yeah because i just literally zoned out but yeah one thing that would definitely make it easier if i actually had the paper and just crossing the pieces off it would 
make my life a lot easier. So wish me luck for next week because I'm doing the 3000 piece puzzle, oh my god. And the one that got voted was the tiger one. It got more votes, which I'm actually really happy about. Like, I love map puzzles, don't get me wrong. But it's just the fact that it's all brown, it just scares me. And I think with the tiger one, I'm gonna be able to, like, sort, at least. So I think that's gonna help a lot. So, wish me luck. Bye!